Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So in honor of the big Red Viper versus the Mountain fight on tonight's episode, I wanted to do my breakdown of my top 10 fighters alive or dead in A Song of Ice and Fire. So I did pull a few out of the books, but they're non-spoilery, and I'm going to do a breakdown of each one. Also, congratulations to Sir Jora Mormont. You're the winner of last week's giveaway. Because there wasn't an episode, I just did my giveaway in my bonus video about the Season 5 characters. So, I will be doing a new round of the giveaway in my Episode 8 video tonight, so that'll start whenever that video posts. Remember, all you have to do to participate is be a subscriber and leave a comment on the video. Don't worry, I'll remind everyone whenever I post. So, Oberyn Martell is fighting the mountain tonight. There's been a ton of funny fake boxing posters. I'm not going to talk about that in this video, just to avoid spoilers. So, if you have read the books and you want to talk about it, just be sure to use the spoiler tag and hit enter like six times before writing your comment. Seriously though, their fight is going to be awesome, so make sure you watch the episode tonight. But let's just jump in the ring and try to find out who the best fighter is in Westeros. So here we go. Number 10, a young Ned Stark. I'm mostly talking about him during Robert's Rebellion. He wasn't big on tourneys or jousting, just traditional warfare and sword play. In battle, he primarily used his two-handed Valyrian greatsword, Ice. I thought that he really deserved a spot on this list for fighting and killing Sir Arthur Dane, the Sword of the Morning, during Robert's Rebellion. Dane was a member of King Aerys Kingsguard, and Ned led the charge during the sack of King's Landing. It was actually right after that that he found Jaime Lannister killing King Aerys. So he was like the first person on the scene. Killing Arthur Dane was just a really big deal because Dane was supposed to be one of the best fighters in Westeros at the time. He, just like Ned Stark, had a two-handed greatsword, but his was called Dawn. It wasn't Valyrian steel, but supposedly it was forged from a fallen star and was supposed to be just as sharp as Valyrian steel. So try to picture Arthur Dane and Ned Stark clanging these two indestructible giant swords against each other, like two giant lightsabers. So there would have been crazy sparks from the impact. Hopefully we'll get to see it at some point. I don't think the show is ever going to do it though. We know what happened to Ned Stark's blade. It was melted down by Tywin Lannister into Oathkeeper and Widow's Whale. But after Ned Stark killed Arthur Dane, he rode back to Starfall to give Dawn to Ashara Dane, the sister of Arthur Dane. That's where the rumors about Ashara Dane being Jon Snow's mother come from. I don't believe them though. Number 9, The Knight of the Laughing Tree. This is actually one of the most mysterious fighters in the books. Whenever Jaime Lannister had his induction ceremony to the King's Guard, King Aerys threw a tournament at Harrenhal. A teenage Hallen Reed got bullied by the squires of House Hay, House Blount, and House Frey. Hallen Reed, just for reference, is the father of Jojen and Mira Reed. They're the ones that have been helping Bran Stark up in the north. This all happened way before they were born, but because Reeds are Stark bannermen, Lyanna Stark rushed up and beat off the squires with a sword. So later, to defend Hallen's honor, a mystery knight showed up in, you know, really patchwork mismatched armor and defeated the knights associated with each of those three squires. The reason the Mystery Knight is called the Knight of the Laughing Tree was because the shield had a white weirwood tree with a laughing red face on it. Because defeating all those knights, you know, caused this really big stir, Robert Baratheon, who is also the attorney and is super competitive, and King Aerys, who's just crazy, demanded that they, you know, find out who that person was. So the Mystery Knight ran off, King Aerys sent Rhaegar Targaryen to find out who it was, but he only came back with the shield with the laughing face on it. The best theory I've seen as to who that was, was Lyanna Stark. It just makes sense that she would be trained to fight. Ned Stark even said that Arya, who's becoming a pretty badass fighter herself, resembles Lyanna. So my theory is, is that Rhaegar found out she was the Mystery Knight, fell in love, they never told King Aerys about it, cut to them, running away together, Robert's Rebellion, etc, etc. So I think that a lot of the R plus L equals J theories flow from the Night of the Laughing Tree and this tournament at Harrenhal, this really epic tournament in the books. So if you want to read more about it, it's in Bran Chapter 2 of Storm of Swords. That's book 3. Number 8, Brienne of Tarth. She's not quite as big as the mountain, but she's bigger and faster than most of the other knights that are still alive on the show. She doesn't have the experience of someone like Ariel Hoda or Barristan Selmy, but she was able to beat the crap out of a weakened Jamie Lannister, who is one of the best fighters in Westeros, before he lost his hand, that is. I would also cite Brienne smashing the hell out of Loras Tyrell during the War of the Five Kings, but it's really unclear as to how much his heart was in that. Usually, the biggest fighters on the show have the biggest advantage, and they only really get beat when they make mistakes or when someone quicker comes along. And Brienne is both big and quick. Her real weakness, though, like most knights, is her hubris. It's pretty easy for people to get under her skin. 
as seen during the Purple Wedding whenever Cersei Lannister went all mean girls on her, and before they became real close, Jaime also had a pretty easy time getting under her skin. I would really like to see a fight between Brienne and Obara Sand, just because I think they'd be pretty evenly matched. You know, Brienne's much bigger, but Obara fights with a really giant pike, just like her father Oberyn Martell. Number 7, Jaime Lannister, when he still had two hands. Jaime actually earned his knighthood by killing the Smiling Knight when Arthur Dayne and a bunch of King Aerys men were trying to rescue someone from a big group of outlaws called the Kingswood Brotherhood. Think of them as being like the previous iteration of the Brave Companions or Locke's group on the show. The Smiling Knight is kind of like the previous version of the mountain. You know, super big, super psychotic, super dangerous. Whenever Arthur Dayne found out Jaime killed that Smiling Knight, he knighted him immediately on the battlefield. Funny side story, after all this happened, Jaime found out that Tywin wanted to marry him off to Lysa Tully. Yes, that same Lysa Tully that took a trip through the moon door. Cersei suggested that he join the Kingsguard to escape and be close to her. Cersei is pretty selfish, but in this case, I'd say she helped Jaime sidestep a pretty big landmine. Just for reference too, when all this was happening, Jaime was about Jon Snow's age. But number six, Great John Umber. He's the head of House Umber, their Stark bannerman. He was at the Red Wedding and was taken captive by the phrase, but he is still alive on the show right now. The reason he's on this list is because he's one of the only people Jaime Lannister thinks could beat him in a fight. Obviously talking about pre-accident Jaime Lannister. Great John is, you know, huge like the mountain, but he's not psychotic, so he's only really dangerous whenever he's in battle. Because he's so huge, he wields a two-handed greatsword that's even bigger than Ned Stark's. It isn't Valyrian steel, but Rob Stark called it the ugliest blade he's ever seen. When he said ugly, I think he just meant fearsome looking. Number 5, The Mountain. We just met the new actor playing the mountain in episode 7. It's the third person to play that role. He's supposed to be about 8 feet tall and weigh about 420 pounds. That makes him the largest human person in the world, at least that we know about. For example, if Strong Belwas were on the show, I still think the mountain would be bigger. His armor is crazy. It's so heavy that he's the only one that can wear it and still move. It's the thickest plate of any armor in Westeros, underneath which he has a layer of chainmail, and then underneath that, a layer of boiled leather. He is a really big dumb animal compared to other more scholarly characters in the show, but he has excellent warrior instincts. So add excellent fighter to fortress-like armor and you get an almost invincible fighter. Supposedly he has really severe headaches that are either caused by his gigantism or like a blow to the head during a tournament. There's a theory that this is part of the reason why he's so psychotic. He just suffered a brain injury that went untreated. I have a really big theory about the mountain as it relates to the character Robert Strong, but since we haven't met that character, I'm going to wait till season 5 to talk about that, just in case there are any spoilers. So if you want to talk about Robert Strong theories in the comments, please just use the spoiler tag and hit enter a couple times. But moving on, number 4, Oberyn Martell, the Red Viper. Yes, I totally think Oberyn Martell is a better fighter than the mountain. Please do not go crazy with spoilers in the comments. The reason I think he's better is because he's way, way quicker. In addition, he has like an 8 foot long pike that he fights with, and he has expert knowledge of poisons. Remember, he forged a couple maesters change, so he's really, really smart. All those things added together just give you the tools you need for fighting someone like the mountain. We'll talk a lot more about that whenever I post my episode review later tonight. Number 3, Ario Hoda. He's like the Barristan Selmy of the Martell family in Dorne. He protects Oberyn's brother, Prince Duran, and wields a really long axe that's about 6 feet. Originally, he's from the Free Cities, and he was trained by the bearded priests of Norvos. The common saying about their order is, is that they're wedded to their axes. They're like a really prominent fighting school that trains people to fight and protect. Just like Barristan Selmy, he's very proper and formal and utterly loyal to Prince Duran. Obviously, in Barristan Selmy's case, it's Daenerys, though. And number two, Barristan Selmy. He trained with Sir Duncan the Tall and Prince Duncan the Small from the Duncan Egg stories. He went on to become one of the greatest knights in the history of Westeros, but early in his life, he earned most of his respect during the War of the Nine Penny Kings after he killed one of the Blackfire Pretenders. He was also at that very famous tournament of Harrenhal, the one with the Knight of the Laughing Tree. He ended up getting unhorsed by Rhaegar Targaryen, who ended up winning the tournament, but I still consider Barristan Selmy to be a better fighter. It's like Ned Stark said to Jaime Lannister, play fighting in tournaments is one thing, fighting on the battlefield is a whole other. And my number one fighter in Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire, a young Robert Baratheon. 
even though on the show we've only seen him after his better years are over, when he was young, he was like the Hollywood leading man of Westeros. Not super bright, but super charismatic and an amazing fighter. If they had holodecks on Game of Thrones, he basically would have just spent his entire life in a never-ending battle. That's why he peaked during the Rebellion, because he was at the height of his physical prowess, and he was just so good at making war. He just enjoyed that lifestyle. But because this list should have been like a top 50, here are a bunch of people that I think deserve to be mentioned, but I just couldn't find spots for. Strong Belwis, The Hound, Sirio Farrell, Arthur Dane, Sir Duncan the Tall, Obara Sand, and Darren the Young Dragon. There's a ton of other characters that we just don't know a lot about, so I'm hoping that the future books just provide some extra context. Now it's your turn though, let me know who do you think is the best fighter in Game of Thrones either on the show or in the books. They can be alive or dead. Later this year there's a book coming out called A World of Ice and Fire that will hopefully fill in a lot of historical gaps because there are a ton of big events like the Tournament of Harrenhal and all the different wars that we don't know a lot about. I'll be sure to do a bunch of bonus videos whenever that comes out in October. In related news, Oberyn Martell vs. The Mountain tonight. Be sure to subscribe to get my video, I'll be sure to post it right after the episode airs. Right now you can click here to watch that, I'll add the annotation as soon as I post it, and you can click here to learn more about the new characters coming in Season 5. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys tonight, high fives.